just looking at the polls, for example, in, in, in Palestine, what I've noticed is, you know, some people will show you these polls, right? It's like 80% of Palestinians of, of Gazans support Hamas. And then you look at the timing and it's right after a bombing campaign, right? Which, of course, it's the rally around the flag effect, right? This is, you know, this is why the U.S. was supporting George Bush uh, Jr. at like, I don't know what his popularity went, like an unthinkable numbers, right? After 9-11. Did you guys all really love George Bush Jr.? Or were you like, I don't care. Whoever it is, we're just like, you know, supporting this guy now. We've gotten desensitized to the concept of an actual victim, you know, like somebody who's actually being oppressed, not like fake oppressed, not like microaggression oppressed, but like legitimately not able to, you know, travel out of a, you know, a small parcel of land where you're born on oppressed, you know, 60% uh, youth unemployment, um, water is polluted, kind of oppressed. Well, there, there was a democratically elected government in Iran that got subverted by, you know, some three-letter agencies. <laughs> um, and, you know, they, they tried to have elections in Egypt and, you know, well, you know, there was, uh, something happened. And, you know, Syria had an elected, you know, democratically elected government. But, you know, oh, yeah, uh, again, this is the CIA. <laughs> if it is the only democracy in the, in the Middle East, it is because we made sure it was. Hello and welcome to Teaching Liberty. My name is Stephanie Edmonds and I have been on a bit of a hiatus, but I am back, work and real life. And then now we have this whole situation going on in the Middle East between Israel and Hamas and more generally the Israel-Palestinian conflict. So I wanted to make sure that when I did come back, I had some time to think about it and um, really make sure that I'm adding to the conversation, which is why I asked Alexandros here to join me, because uh, the way that you've been thinking through this situation and I mean, I saw your work during the pandemic with debunking the ivermectin trials. And I just I really admire the way that you've thought through this. Um, some of the people who I've relied on the thinkers, the podcasters, I've been sort of like, oh, am I wrong here? Because I'm not seeing this like them. Um, and I felt a bit intimidated to, to really speak out, even though I've been to Israel and I've been to the West Bank um, in 2009. And that really helped me see through this issue and dig into this issue. And I've been doing it for almost 15 years. Um, and so I wanted to have you on here to, to talk about it. And so if you could just Give everybody a little bit of an introduction about who you are and um, your big picture analysis of what's going on right now. I consider myself a generalist. Like I, I, I try to like not be intimidated to jump into anything in, in my in my life. I've done all sorts of things um, before I sort of jumped into the Twitter world. I was running a startup who was you know kind of tech startup VC the whole uh thing that uh was running a pretty sizable network of internet of things uh devices infrastructure so we we served others who were building internet of things stuff um you know we we did you know really really cool stuff there i mean i'm a kind of technologist by by nature and like it wasn't you know when when it was like what are you going to study alex like there wasn't there was never really a question <laughs> per se i was you know that that's kind of my my, my natural inclination um but you know i've, I've sort of always taken a, a very holistic approach to stuff. I, I you know, I try, uh, I've spoken a lot about the, the problems of specialization where you sort of zero in on something and then you kind of miss all of the other ways to uh, see it. You know, some, one of my, my best tricks in life is sort of going into a domain, seeing something cool, some, some way to think about things that they have that's really smart and then just taking it to another domain, right? And then people are like, oh my God, you're a genius. It's like, no, I... <laughs> <laughs> just I'm telling you what they're doing. It's not a uh, really some novel idea. It's just the translation is, is often uh, missing between between different, you know, people just go completely um, on blinders and, and don't even check basically what's happening around them. Uh, so, you know, that's kind of where, where I'm coming from in general. Now, yeah, as you said, during the pandemic, I, I think a, a lot of people sort of maybe, you know, fell into that rabbit hole, so to speak. Um, where you're following the data, right? You're a science person, you know, I got a PhD, I consider myself, you know, like a science person or, you know, a rationalist even one, one, once upon a time. 
So I was like, all right, you know, we're following the data. Okay, cool. You know, and, you know, whenever I would hear something that was crazy, I would be like, you know, well, let's check, check into it just in case, you know, just to be sure. And then you're like, oh, wait a minute. The crazies are right here. <laughs> and then, you know, you see the next thing and you're like, oh, wait a minute. Okay. You know, and then they start stacking up and then you're like, okay, what is going on? Because you know, I, you know, I know how to read papers. I know how to, you know, understand the data and what you're telling me makes no sense. You know, like, for example, the first real, you know, red pill, black pill, call it what you want, um, was the Israeli uh, data on waning immunity, right? Uh, which my, my wife actually brought to me. And I was like, oh, you know, and, and, and if, you, if you just think through it, it's, 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 the implications are stunning, right? Because if there's no, immu like, long-lasting immunity, there is no herd immunity. If there's no herd immunity, there's no point to mandate. So there's no point to mandate. What are we... <laughs> What are we doing? You know, like, <clears throat> and it's sort of, this is a good example of how, like, one piece of information is all it takes to sort of make, get all the dominoes uh, falling. And then once you actually internalize all of that, you just see the madness, just right, you know, like, you see, like, Joe Biden getting up there saying, like, you're not going to get COVID if you get these vaccinations and whatever. And it's like, oh, boy, you know, like, like, to be able to tweet in real time, this will age badly, right? I knew it at the time. And I, and I, and I wrote it. I'm like, this is not going to work out what he just said is a big problem right and to this day it's falling in like it's so you know was i like a genius no like i was just you know you see the data you follow it so that's what i try to do i try to do a lot of first principles right when you when when you enter some new domain and you really have no idea what's going on you hear a lot of people and they make very complex arguments that rely on layers and layers and layers of like assumptions and presuppositions and history and whatever whatever it's always very hard to um, know where which side's up, right? So, so what I usually tend to do is find simple things, simple little, you know, pretty solid things that can can step on and say, okay, look, I, I I don't know what's happening here, but I know this, right? Or I know that, and then you start putting up the the building blocks. I actually, since you've got a teaching background, this will uh, entertain you. Uh, I remember doing this. What? How old should I have been? Maybe like twelve. Some some like very young age. Nah, maybe it was like maybe it was closer to fifteen. Whatever. I had a geometry problem. Geometry was my favorite uh, um, sort of course uh, class in, in, in you know pre-university education. I was it was a revelation for me. So I was really into it. Um, and they gave me a really hard problem to solve. And I really, I just like my little brain was blown. Like I just could, whatever I threw at it, I just could not uh, find the way. So. I said, you know, at some point, I, I just I was like, look, I can't find how to show what they want me to show. Instead of doing that, I will just find what I can show, right? I will like literally, they give me, you know, all these little, you know, constraints. But I'll, say, like, I'll see what I can make with what I have, right? And after I did that for a while, I actually build up some, built up some building blocks, and then I, I could actually get there, right? So instead of like trying to follow a targeted approach where I'm like, okay, this is what, this is my conclusion, you know, how do I support it or whatever. I was like, all right, what what can I find out with with what I have, right? I can I don't see the path to where I want to go, but what, like, where can I go? And, and and often, after a while, you those sort of stepping stones you've you've built actually do show you a path to somewhere. But if you start with you know trying to support a pre uh, you know given conclusion from from the start, you often end up tying yourself up in knots because. More often than not, you know the, the 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 narratives that are on 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 offer to adopt are are all of them are you know both they you know if there's two narratives fighting, um, they're probably both you know wrong in important ways. But you know if you, if you see it from like what tribe do I join? Um, I don't know. Yeah, I, I've I've never really found much um, sort of use, useful uh, light that way. And uh, last piece I'll add here, sort of my entrepreneurial background sometimes steps in. And if you're an entrepreneur, right, you're trying to find what people don't know, right? You, you, you're, you're, if your startup is doing everything that everybody else is doing, right, you're dead, you're gone. You have to find somehow to uh, have some, some insight that others don't have, right? So you can actually wedge in there, right? There's companies with a lot more money than you, with a lot more talent than you, with a lot more everything than you. So if you don't have some edge somehow, uh, if you just follow basically the, the the pack, you're gone. Like there's, you know, might not even, might as well not start, which is why I found during COVID this pressure to conform to what everybody, they're like, you know, but the consensus believes this. I'm like, 
yeah, the, you know, that's our starting point. Now we got to find <laughs> where the holes are and just, you know, that, that, that no, was you're not allowed to do that. <laughs> no finding holes. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Um, <laughs> anyway. I, I don't know if that was helpful, but that's uh, no, it's, I, it's interesting uh, again to hear about your background and how you think. And even though I don't fancy myself so much as a geometry person, I, I guess I can theoretically understand why it might be so exciting. But for me, I don't personally find it that way. I was always much more of a, <laughs> a humanities kind of person. But when you explain your thought process of trying to okay well how can i get this done or at least a piece of this done and then just build from there i do feel like that is very much how i approach things in tangent with trying to figure out okay well what is the first principle here like what is the the truth that will always be that you can transfer in different ways to different situations um and one of those first principles that i found is very relevant um, for trying to navigate this current crisis and figuring out what it is, is this idea that uh, every action has like an equal and opposite reaction. So you can think about it in terms of physics, or you can think about it in terms of the an equation, right? Both sides of the equation have to fit, or, you know, we have a Republican party and a Democrat party, and they're really just sort of opposites of each other. And, um, I see a lot of people doing knee-jerk reactions to join one tribe or the other and then refusing to recognize that either side is essentially like the inversion of the other. Um, and so I guess we can sort of take that um, equation or that formula, I'm not sure, I think it's formula, right? The first principle and maybe try to, to to build from there, whether you agree with it or disagree with it, how that might map on to the Israel-Palestine conflict, um, where we have like, you have to stand with Israel, you have to stand with Palestine. And, you know, once you do, there's all these um, particular positions that you must be taking. And um, yeah, I don't know, what do you, what do you sort of see just generally happening and, and how are you processing this? And then maybe we can dig some more into it, into some of the specifics. Yeah. So um, I usually, when I, when, when, when that sort of dichotomy is, is proposed, right? Like, yeah, Democrats, Republicans, Palestinians, Israelis, whatever. Um, I, and I don't think like I, I formalize this as a rule, but it's just kind of a pattern I, I've, I've seen uh, more often than not, that's just the wrong, you know, the wrong frame. Right. So, for example, Republicans and Democrats, are they really the opposite of each other? Or are they, you know, is this a dance, right? Because, you know, everybody's like, oh, my God, you know, like uh, division in Congress is at a record high. It's like, well, the Ukraine funding went through with like, I don't know, more votes than senators. So I guess, <laughs> you know, some mail-in like, ballots they just found real quick. They were like, oh, look. Former senators, future senators, added, like somehow the, 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 the degree of unanimity is just like, through the through the roof you know and then you're wondering it's like is this really intention or are they helping each other and you know maybe slightly more controversially uh even on the on the hamas question is like are you know are the extremists on both sides really at odds or are they helping each other at the expense of the uh people who want peace right like i um I'm not saying like, this is kind of like a formal conclusion. It's something I'm suspecting. Just looking at the polls, for example, in, in, in Palestine, what I've noticed is, you know, some people will show you these polls, right? It's like 80% of Palestinians of, of Gaza support Hamas. And then you look at the timing and it's right after a bombing campaign, right? Which, of course, it's the rally around the flag effect, right? We, this is, you know, this is why the U.S. was supporting George Bush uh, Jr. at, like, I don't know what his popularity went. To, like, unthinkable numbers, right, after 9-11. Um, and it's like, did you re did you guys all really love George Bush Jr.? Or were you like, I don't care. Wh whoever it is, we're, we're just, like, you know, supporting this guy now. Uh, and then you see that when things calm down, the support for Hamas goes down, right? So then... Again, I'm, I'm I'm only hypothesizing. I'm not saying this is how what what they're doing. I'd, I'd need a little bit more evidence to to get there. But could I imagine that Hamas seeing you know knowing that they're like we need to create some trouble right now, right? Because our our support is uh, is, is dropping. Maybe people are you know, but, but people don't know. Often people mention this 2006 election where Hamas was elected. 
right? And and again, you know, people would like Hamas is Gaza, but if I say the Democrat Party is America, people would be like, what the hell are you talking about, right? But somehow Hamas, like a party, right, is you know a, a country or whatever, a statelet, whatever Gaza counts as. You know, that sounds more reasonable than saying you know the Republican Party during the you know the Trump era is America. That that sounds really weird. Um, so you know when. Sorry, I lost my turn of thought. Well, so, well, as you pointed out, like that is Osama bin Laden logic. Yeah, I think you've said this yeah. several times. I mean, literally, <laughs> where you said. say this whole <laughs> group of people, everybody in America is responsible for the crimes of our government, or a particular president, or a particular part of our government department, and that was the justification they gave for flying planes into buildings and and other places as well. Um, and yeah, I see that logic being applied over and over again. And in particular, in when they say, well, they voted for Hamas or they support Hamas. Um, and then I think I try oh, right. to so I, 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 go ahead. Yeah. I, I recovered my, my train of thought. So if you, if you I can continue now the, 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 the thought process. Yeah. So, so what, what actually happened in those elections? By the way, there's this incredible Hillary Clinton quote, quote which, she, which in which she said, we should not have pressured them to run these elections because they, they did. Uh, but if we did, we should have done something to 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 uh, uh, influence who won. She, like she literally said that. I mean, that's pretty much American policy, isn't it? Like, I, know, I, 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 I need more fingers to count how many foreign elections we've interfered in. Like, But, like, who says that? Like, I, I know, like, okay, it's being done. But, like, who actually goes in front of a journalist and, like, you know, <laughs> just spouts that? Whatever. Anyway, um, so the thing is, what were... The, the the Palestinians faced with at the time they had a choice right and 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 much like the whole like wasted vote like philosophy they really had a choice between two parties Fatah Hamas Fatah was you know the the established power but they were very corrupt and everybody knows that right they were literally just taking money from every every side right okay well and and what do you have you have the upstarts right you have the the the, the, the Donald Trump of, of of Palestinian politics which is this these like crazies who are you know, like completely out there, but have some integrity, right? Because of their religious backing, they were actually not that corrupt. Um, so people were like, you know what, you know, might as well try those guys sort of thing, right? Um, but my point is, Hamas is now corrupt as well. Sh shocking. People people at least perceive them to be corrupt, right? I'm assuming there's some, re some reason for that. Um, so again, like, if you see that, your Hamas, you see that, you see your polling is going down. Fatah is actually more popular in Gaza than Hamas. Weird. Um, and, and people are calling you also corrupt. You're like, could it be that you're just like, we need something drastic here to like change the game? And if some people die, well, you know, that's, uh, that's how it is. Anyway, long story short, I think when you have these two polls and they've reached some sort of weird equilibrium, more often than not, I find that they look like they're fighting but on, on some level they're also um i don't want to say cooperating but i want to say like there's a synergy between them they, they they kind of like feed off each other like a controlled opposition almost like you don't have to be directly controlled to be controlled opposition you just have to have converging interests that's and right it was not the, the, the george carlin light right there's no conspiracy required when there's converging interests yeah sure um exactly and I mean, going back to the sort of um, thing where you're talking about the context matters of who, who people are voting for or giving their support to, um, I saw the same thing in the school reopenings. In school reopenings, in places where schools were less open, people were less likely to say they wanted open schools because it was a scarier idea. They were unfamiliar with it. But in places where schools were more open, more people said they want open schools because they realized it wasn't so scary. Um, so it, it it's going to vary based on what your your perspective is and your perception is of the time. And of course, what your your two choices are, you know, they're making a lesser of two evil um, choice. And I think also we have to talk about what drives people to make such extremist or take such extremist positions. Um, again, I'm going to go back to during COVID and lockdowns and school closures and um, the mandates. I mean, I was out in the street protesting. I did sit-ins. Um, you know, I got fired for my job. 
Um, like I felt you know, radicalized in ways. I did things that I never imagined that I might have to do, but I felt like I didn't have options. Um, right. These mandates were being pushed through in in ways that were not they're just down from the executive, right? There's no regular uh, legislative procedures where you have a bill that goes through and there's checks and balances. They were just, and there's, you know, when's the election, right? We're voting for Joe Biden or Donald Trump. Like, what? Yeah. Um, yep. So I felt like I didn't have options. And so you're pushed to do things that you might not normally do. And of course there's levels to this and I don't want to be here. I'm not trying to justify terroristic actions or, or, um, you know, make excuses for them. I'm just trying to understand the line of thinking and understand what pushes people to do that. Yeah, I think somebody actually said it really well. I, I don't, I don't remember who it was, but you know, there's like explaining versus justifying, right? Like you can, you can understand that the the course of action that leads someone somewhere. But you know that's true for anything, right? You could you could understand how somebody murders somebody else. That doesn't mean that you you don't think they should go to prison, but you sort of can can trace the actions that led that person to that to that point. Um, you know, to some degree, you know, everything is cause and effect. So you know, there's some reason. But does that mean that nobody's ever blameworthy for anything? You know, that sounds pretty strange conclusion. Um, but yeah, you you have to be able to hold both thoughts in your head right and then and, and that's kind of the same thing we, we were sort of touching on before where yeah things are things are really complicated and like I, look I, I i talk with a lot of people online right on on x uh formerly known as uh, twitter um and you know sometimes I'm, i wonder like if you if you were born in gaza like you seem pretty, you know, you seem pretty militant. Uh, let's, let me put it that way. If you were born in Gaza, you know, would you be in Islamic Jihad or al Qassam Brigade? That's my only question, really. You know, and, and you know, that sounds kind of weird, but like, every, you know, I don't know, once you, once you start seeing context, and honestly, I don't know, from, from, from my point of view, right, condemnations and all that stuff, yes, at some point you have to say, like, that's not okay, all right. But how, how do you get past that? How do you, how do you actually figure out what's what way is, is forward which actually brings me to the next thing which is you know people often are like well what's your solution and it's like oh okay so the, the standard for speaking here is literally solving the palestinian problem <laughs> very low that's why like, come why on alexandros you don't have a solution <laughs> what um but the the situation is and and you know the whole like sort of israel palestine question that the situation is really dire you know if you zoom out a little bit from the, the current uh conflict um because people will say like you know there's a one-state solution and a two-state solution right but the one-state solution is untenable from israel's point of view because then you basically have a state with um seven million uh jews and seven million non-jews Right between if you if you if you take the number of um, I want to be careful with my my adjectives here my, my my designations here you know the I guess Arabs or Palestinians is the is the word that's used um, you have about seven million uh, Palestinians and seven million Jews um, sort of split between the various territories right so there's like I think there's there's, there's um, three million in the west three million Palestinians in the West Bank plus uh, East Jerusalem. 2 million in Israel proper and 2 million in Gaza, right? You add that up, you get seven. Uh, so that's about the same number of uh, Jews in Israel. So you, if you, if you had a one state that would be about equal, right. And, 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 you know, given demographics, right. It's probably going to flip. And, and that's before we get into right of return for another 7 million Palestinian refugees that are like in camps across, you know, across the region and, and beyond. Right? So, you can sort of see why, you know, the Israeli side would be like, yeah, no, we're not gonna, <laughs> we're not gonna make like a single state with everybody voting. Like that's, that's just not gonna happen. Which, honestly, I, I don't know. So, some somewhere in the back of my mind, I think, you know, that's just the normal thing to do. You, you, having a state with like an insistence that we will be a state with this a certain kind of majority, is 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 just. It's like trying to make a, you know, in Greek we say like, you're trying to make a hole in the water. Like it's you're just fighting against every single law of nature. Like, how, tell me how you're gonna do that. But anyway, 
just leave that aside, right? That's just kind of like very long. Okay, well, then there's a two-state solution. But the two-state solution runs into the problem of the settlements, right? Because, uh, you know, okay, if, well, if it was Gaza on the West Bank, you know, it's okay, they're disconnected, whatever. But it's, like the, you know, they're, they're specific territories with people in them. Palestinians have like grudgingly, I suppose, accepted something like that. Even Hamas has said, like, we accept the state uh, uh, along those lines. And people will say, yeah, but they haven't recognized Israel. Fine, whatever. Like, I'm just saying grudgingly, you know, pretty much everybody on the Palestinian side is like, if the Israelis could just leave, you know, that part, we could go there, would be, you know, okay. Again, I'm not saying they would leave any ambitions further, right? It's in, in, And by the way, in exactly the same way as the people who say, um, oh, the Israelis accepted the 19, 1947 partition plan from the UN. Yes, they did. But if you hear the statements of their leaders, they said, that's good for now, right? That, that's what they literally, right. that's what they said. But we can't pass also... on the it's also like, don't you need two parties in agreement to make a deal? Isn't that kind of a basic first principle? One person can't just say, yeah, this is the deal. Sorry yep. if you agree to it or not. But the UN said so. But anything the UN said after that, they suck. Yeah. yeah it's it's it, Anyway, I mean, yeah, once we get into that, that whole, like, look, you got to understand, like, there are incredibly smart people who are trying to argue for one side, right? So you're going to hear any and every argument for one side. I mean, even... Just to, just to give you a sense of one rabbit hole I was going down the other day, you know, there's this 1967 uh, resolution. Actually, I don't know if it was exact. It was about the 1967 war resolution uh, from the UN Security Council called uh, Resolution 242 that was kind of saying this whole land for peace thing, like Israel should withdraw, but everybody else should also ac accept their right to exist and whatever. Um, there is this inane argument that because it says... Um, Israel should withdraw from uh, occupied territories, but not the occupied territories. That the Security Council did not intend to say that they should withdraw from all the occupied territories, but just some, right? But then people are like, no, like, look at the French version, which, uh, you know, in terms of the UN, they're both equally valid. Uh, that one has a definitive article. So, like, you know, like, that's the level that people are going to go and parse literally every word and say, like, if their word is missing and it, was, it allows for our point of view to be somehow, you know, justified, then we're just going to make that argument, right? You're literally going to hear <laughs> any any argument under the sun has mm. been made. This is like the probably the most argued topic in the history of humanity um, it has been explored to, to death. Um, so I wanted to bring up just an example of some of the stuff that's been going on here in the United States. There's, of course, been a, a big outbreak in protesting um, on both sides. But I, I think the, the bigger protests have been sort of on the pro-Palestine side. Um, and here, I'm just going to share this picture here. OK, so we have this picture right here. And this shows like one of these protests and it's a lot of the same people who are out at the BLM protests. It's sort of seen as like the woke left college kids on um, the progressive left. And um, she's what she's saying. We won't play the video, but what she's saying is how Nike and all these American companies, they support the state of Israel. And then boom, she's she's wearing a pair of Nikes. Um, and, <laughs> you know, and, and just sort of all sorts of just crazy sort of things of like um, reproductive justice means free Palestine. Right. So all of these sort of woke everything is human rights and they're conflating their sort of regular narrative right over top of the free Palestine movement. Mm -hmm. And then in reaction to that, we have people on on what I would consider, you know, I guess the anti-woke crowd. So I'm thinking like, you know, James Lindsay, Constantin Kissin, um, uh, Murray, right? Um, they're sort of having this reaction where they're going back and they're saying, um, that you know this oppressor versus oppressed narrative it's nonsense this is an attack on the west and they're just sort of really overlaying our culture wars right on top of this um yep. israel palestine issue 
And in my opinion, it just, it doesn't match, right? They're not what I would consider like finishing the circle. They're seeing the identity politics in the one side and how it doesn't make sense. And then I'm, I'm not being self-reflective about what the other side is saying and saying, hmm, are there some of the same patterns going on here? Which is like kind of going back to that initial first um, principle that I had presented about how you have to see that there's going to be similar elements on both sides. Um, so I don't know what what you're kind of seeing out there, what your thoughts are on this. Yeah, and I mean, I'm sure you know the, the whole queer queers for Palestine uh, thing. I mean, I saw another one which is like homeless for Hamas. Uh, you know, like you know, it just you know gets ever ever a stranger. I don't know. I don't even know if that was like a legit thing or uh, somebody you know trying to just get into the you know the, the wedge uh, issue there and get and attract attention. But like, um, it's okay. But you know, like that's first of all, that's a form of nut picking, right? I don't know if you know the term, if you heard the term nut picking. Uh, it's like you find what? a crazy person on the other side and you're like, you're like that guy, you know, like with the vaccines, it was like the 5G thing. It's like, oh, you know, you guys are the, it's like, no, I'm not the 5G people. Like, why would you say that? I'm just telling you the numbers don't add up and you're like randomly bringing up, you know, the, the, the guy who's talking about the patents for SARS-CoV-2. Basically when, you know, you're seeing all this, these people who, yeah, we, we kind of got to know and follow and like, you know, during this sort of uh, the whole woke, anti-woke uh, tensions. Um, I, I don't know. I was writing earlier today. My, my sense is that um, there's, you know, we've gotten desensitized to the concept of an actual victim, you know, like somebody who's actually being oppressed, not like, fake oppressed, not like microaggression oppressed, but like legitimately not able to, you know, travel out of a, you know, a small parcel of land where you're born on oppressed, you know, 60% uh, youth unemployment, um, water is polluted, kind of oppressed. Uh, right. So, you know, it's, 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 it's hard to convey that concept to maybe people who have seen it all, right. I've heard it all have made up their minds now that, you know, they're just not going to, they're just not, not going to accept these claims. And especially when the people who they know are, were crying wolf, right, um, are now on, on that side, right? So I, I guess I can understand where that is coming from. At the same time, you know, being Greek, um, I grew up in a completely different part of the world. Um, you know, we were, uh, Greeks like traditionally are sensitized to the Palestinian uh, problem. Maybe there's some like sense of kinship or maybe we're just from the same part of the world like literally if you see my 23 and me it might as well be you know north africa middle east and southern southern europe right like that's just i you know i think to myself sometimes i could have been born there and by the way there could have been on either side of the line right like I, i'm not that different i could i could walk in, around in tel aviv or uh you know or gaza and people would probably speak to me in whatever language in fact it, it happened when i was in beirut um you know, people would just like address me in Arabic, like just because, you know, that's, that's just the type, right? East, East Med. Um, so, you know, I, I feel a kinship with the, the, the people there and it's not something that comes from like, a, a, you know, a wokeness, like sensitization. People know I've, you know, I've been pretty, you know, clear that I don't, you know, in general, I don't like people being uh, denied their rights, whether that's gay rights or whatever. At the same time, um, there's a line, right? And that line then gets uh, crossed and, and, and you start demanding other people conform to your own sens sensibilities, right? And, 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 and that's when, you know, I'm like, nah, I'm not, I'm, you know, uh, even, even on, on, on matters like pronouns, at some point I was more um, open to it. And at some point I was like, no, you just can't tell other people how to speak. You might not like it and you might not like them for it, but like, okay, you know, well, we, we have to find some way of, of, of being that doesn't compel somebody to use whatever word you feel is the right word. Even even if it's rude, and even if I, you know, I would probably uh, do that if it was somebody I, I genuinely felt uh, was not trying to, you know, uh, make a play for for, for something. Um, just in a normal situation, uh, whatever. But like th that's one thing. What I would do is one thing, and what I would sort of be okay with enforcing on everybody, regardless of the context, is another. Right. So there's 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 that sort of you know overstretched victimhood that we've gotten to uh, to know here in the West. And there's, you know, actual people being bombed to death because they they got born in the wrong part of the world, right? And if we can't tell the difference between those two things, I think, you know, something is truly broken. Yeah, that's, I, 
And I also think that a lot of the sort of identity politics that comes along with the wokeness, right? Because um, a lot of this is about you were like, you take your identity where you're like, okay, we want to make sure that everybody has equal rights. But then it's like, you start taking your, you called it like sensibilities and trying to impress them upon other people because of like your, the perceived important importance of your identity to yourself. Um, and I, you know, I don't have the great words to explain it um, in such a way as James Lindsay, um, but I do think that I can recognize that he's not able to take his thought process and then apply it to his analysis of Zionism. And, and to me, I see a lot of the same identity games being um, invoked by um, people who proclaim themselves Zionists or friends of Zionists or just generally people who fervently stand with Israel. Um, and I think that, you know, if we're going to be talking about this victimhood mentality versus the no oppressor versus oppressed mentality, I feel like they're making a lot of those plays. They're claiming to be so oppressed all throughout history and over time. And and it's certainly not that there's not any truth to that either, right? Like I'm a, I'm, I'm Jewish. I, I, I know the history well. Um, and I understand that anti-Semitism is a real thing. Um, but I, I do think that, that Zionists are in many ways being that woke thing that they hate. And then I saw Elon Musk tweeted out, you know, we've reached uh, peak wokeness with the implication being that um, all these people, like especially these these sort of like woke Jews, are now realizing that the people who they had aligned themselves are like right. not really their friends, and so they're being like, "Oh, I'm waking up to the wokeness." Um, but again, I just see that as like this misapplication or inability to apply the same um, thought process to the other side of the coin, and so they're like, "Oh, there's no wokeness around here because they're 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 standing on top of it, like they are the woke, so they can't see it." <laughs> I mean, this is kind of fascinating, right? Because it's almost like people are fighting over the woke frame, like who is the actual oppressor and who's the actual oppressor here, right? Like it's, it's, and you know, when the, the statements are coming out of Israel about how like Hamas is the Nazis, it's like, well, that doesn't fit. I mean, yeah, I get it. Like they're killing Jewish people. I understand that. But like, surely <laughs> you, know, you can just kind of like look and, and see like there's a bunch of problems with that with that statement, but it has to be done, right? Because they have to be identified as oppressors in order to justify whatever's going to happen to them. Uh, and of course, I'm not defending Hamas, like whatever. But ultimately what, you know, that goes towards is like the, what was it, like a senator or congressman, whatever it was, this person making the speech saying like, oh, well, you know, it's like the, the innocent Nazi civilians. Hey, there's no such thing as a Nazi civilian. There's, you know, there's German civilians, right? But you're just sort of stretching that identity over to make your point that um, even the Nazis had civilians or, you know, like trying to like smear, you know, before Hitler was elected, they were, the communists and the Nazis were fighting on the streets. There were, I can guarantee you there were a lot of people in Germany who, who hated the Nazis' guts. And some of those people were the same people that were bombed in Dresden and died, right? Yeah, it's it's uncomfortable, uh, but that was their their life was being bombed by the people who they supported, trying to save them from the Nazis. Uh, that was their life story. That's how it ended, right? Entire right. families. Oops, you know, it's 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 messed up. But that's what we have to live with. I, I'm sorry that you can't just be like, oh, well, you know, Nazi civilians. <laughs> you know right. how they are. <laughs> uh, yeah, and. And also it kind of even pushes to the side that there was any conversation about the morality of that bombing campaign. It just assumes that we all agreed like, yeah, that was totally okay. We should, we should just repeat that again throughout history and, and, and um, use that as a precedent to justify our cur current actions. Um, it's, it's, it's sort of taking this I mean, idea like that we're a liberal, we're liberal, right? That we're, that we are the the moral high ground and collapsing it in on itself. 
Like, I do understand there's some point, like you, you have to use force, right? When you have no other options. So, you know, sometimes those things get tricky. I always think like, you know, I was like an ardent anti-masker. Like I would not put on a mask. And I remember like when they got rid of the mask mandates, there was like those people who like ardently wore their mask. And I just, what I could see in them and, you know, there's some people who were super traumatized, I think, and like a lot of them still kind of wear, but there was like, just like, they really believed in the mask. And I was just like, I saw in them myself being an anti-masker, you know? So it's like, I, and, and I feel like that's the most human thing to do is like recognize that in yourself and try to like, okay, this is their thought process. I, you know, um, but. And, and you can see how it happens, right? Like, I mean, you've, just, I mean, again, for first principles, you've got the authorities of your country, the health authorities of your country, right, telling you that this thing is going to save you. Like, you know, again, taking out the rest of the context, why would you doubt that? Like, it, I mean, it's perfectly reasonable, right? And then they tell you that these bad people are out there who believe like QAnon conspiracies and that masks don't, don't work. And you're like, wow, these must be really bad people. You know, I remember myself being, you know, really worked up about anti-vaxxers, right? Like really worked up. And 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 I remember myself having some really some some thoughts I would right now I would say like those are extremely stupid thoughts, Alex. <laughs> but like if you don't like dive under the surface and like you know learn 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 yourself some things, <laughs> um you you see how that works. I mean, it's not hard to put right. yourself in, in that position. And I think that this kind of goes back to um the Sam Harris thing, right? <laughs> Because that you were talking about why the IDW failed, and this is sort of exactly why is like that inability to have humility and self reflection and be like, okay, I was wrong, and this is why I was wrong, and and try to get get stronger. Um, and I mean, something I, I really, really try to do comment sections could get hard because people just want to make those ad hominem attacks or those, like, they just want to dunk on you really quick. And I'm like, hold on, can we just like put some ideas out there and not be like, this is what you think. And just be like, no, this is like an idea. It's a line of thought that might be considered. Um, and so I don't know, maybe we can do something about that. But I did want to um, kind of like bring this conversation out a little bit further because I've been seeing people connect um, this, you know, woke, anti-woke, mapping it over the Palestinian-Israeli problem and then pulling it out further to like um, Muslims and Islam and these sort of like Eastern, Middle Eastern, um, anti-liberal trends um, infecting the West. And I actually want to play this very beginning clip of, um, of the Bill Maher thing, because just the way that he says it is, I don't know, I feel like it's a, like a historical, but we can talk about it. So let me, let me share this. Surely he's done a, he's done a, he's done a whole uh, movie about the region. Surely he was. <laughs> right. Well, and, and I'm not saying like Bill Maher is supposed to be like, you know, some historical authority. I know right now he doesn't have writers, right? Is that still a thing? Um, But the reason I'm using him is because like, I think he exemplifies a lot of the yeah. things I'm hearing people who I would consider to be like smart right. people. Right. I mean, I saw Elon Musk tweet this, um, or maybe it was the parody account. I'm confusing it with him. And, but <laughs> I've seen, you know, there's that it's Elon Musk parody account. I'm like, damn, yeah, maybe it was the parody account. But I've seen people like um, Douglas Murray tweeted this out, right? I've seen James Lindsay like with the eyeballs, like, oh my god, or like when when Paris banned the the protests, he was like, oh, maybe there's hope for the West, right? Things like this. Um, so I, that's why I'm playing Bill Maher, not because he's like supposed to be some no, no, historian, but this is what actual people who are supposed to be smart are saying. And finally, new rule for all the progressives and academics who refer to Israel as an outpost of Western civilization like it's a bad thing. Please note, Western civilization is what gave the world pretty much every goddamn liberal precept that liberals are supposed to adore. And like, we don't even really need to, to watch more than that, because I think it really, <laughs> like, it really gets to, he goes on to just basically list all of these, you know, liberal democratic things that 
the West Gate. But you can see he he summarized both the, this like mapping on of the center colonialism. And then I don't know, it sounded like he endorsed imperialism. He was like, oh, yeah, it's so good for the West to have outposts around the world. Right. And then he he said <laughs> that all all progress and liberalism has solely come from, you know, the West. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if you have any initial reactions to that. Where to start? Right. Um, look, it's 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 the whole thing is so fascinating to me. There, there's like once you actually zoom out a little bit more, you, you then you know just the, the the actual conflict, right? Is there kind of a brain worm issue happening with the Islamic faith as it is being currently practiced? Because it's gone through phases and phases, right? Um, for example, one thing that people don't know, uh, which is pretty much again like one of those little steps I've I found. Is if you if you actually look at the genetic data, you know most uh, Palestinians or many, I would say, I think most are former Jews. It's just what it is. I'm sorry. Like you know why, right? Because the Ottoman Turks, the way they practiced Islam, was pretty tolerant actually, right? But um, the there was a, there was a catch, and the catch is you have to pay an extra tax, right? That was basically uh, you know if you if you pay the extra tax, you can be Jewish, you can be Christian, you can be you know Armenians were another sort of uh, you know distinct minority there, and so long as you you know you 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 paid your 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 fee, uh, you were you were good. But of course, you realize that that creates an incentive, right? It creates a directionality over hundreds of years where people will be like, hey, I don't really feel strongly about this and I don't want to pay the tax. Might as well just join, you know, those guys. Um, and, you know, this is why, you know, if you, you know, if you think about it, like, you know, today we have a country called Turkey, right? And the, the inhabitants are called Turks. But if you actually look at the, you know, the Turks broadly, they come from Central Asia, right? But they don't look like people from Central Asia. Right, they look like me. Uh, if you're just average Turkish person, um, and it's like, okay, why is that? Well, because I don't know how many came over from Central Asia, but like ultimately, the vast majority of the people were people who converted, right? And and um, the when you know, so Greece and and modern Turkey are both countries that have been created from exchange of population. So my grandparents were actually born. If you draw a line straight up from Israel like kind of this armpit of uh, the Mediterranean. Um, that's where, you know, my, my my grandparents were from and they got kicked out because they were Christians, right? Not because they were Greeks, um, they were Christians. So that, that was the distinction. It was an ethnic distinction. Um, so, you know, there were leftovers, I guess, from whatever, but it was the same population is what I'm saying, right? They just split ac across religious lines and then characterized along ethnic lines. Um, so that's, you know, that's, that's the story of the, of the, of the whole region. So, you know, that's that's another form of Islam, right? Which is like a lot more tolerant, uh, but with an asterisk. Okay, um, there's other forms of Islam, right? Like ISIS or whatever, and there's other forms. <laughs> and, and I'm sure there's everything in between. There's the, there's the form of Islam that saved the ancient Greek texts, right? When the Catholic Church was writing over them, right? The, the, they got saved in, you know, in, 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 the, in the Muslim world, in the Arab world, and then they came back to the West. So, like, I mean... It's, it's like we haven't read the Old Testament, right? Or I guess the Torah, um, you know, with, you know, absolutely abhorrent things in there. But that's how religions work, that we find ways to process them and make them compatible with actually living, right? And when we get really aggravated, we go back to those things and we're like, ah, you know, kill the infidel, whatever. Um, so, okay, well, that, that's that's one, that one aspect. Um, <clears throat> At the same time, you know, what is the West, right? I think Brett Weinstein has a, fantastic take on this that I just endorse, you know, I would, would co-sign with both both hands, uh, which is like the West is about living beyond lineage, right? Living beyond uh, my tribe, right? So you can tell me that Israel is, a, is an outpost of the West, but it's an outpost of the West to the degree that it can absorb the Palestinian Arabs uh, within the within the, the walls of Israel. That's, that's you know, that isn't a characteristic of the West. To, uh, to, the, to the extent that it also, though, is, is sort of you know, scheming at some level. I don't know if it's some certain political parties or the government, the governing party or whatever, um, to expel uh, the people from Gaza into Sinai. I mean, I was I was uh, kind of somewhere glibly saying the other time it's like they're, 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 there's a Jewification of the of the Palestinians. You know, what, you're going to send them the Exodus to the to wander in the desert, like legitimately. <laughs> 
Well, they're the real Jews, aren't they? Right? That's what you're saying. Some of them, right? You know, and 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 then I hear this other thing about like nobody wants them. It's like, ha- have you not seen the headlines from the Daily Mail in the 1930s talking about the German Jews flooding our country? Like, you know, I don't know. The, the parallels are, are kind of shocking to me, right? And 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 I'm, again, I'm not saying that you know every Palestinian is is a saint and Hamas are good people or whatever, but Again, let's just keep multiple thoughts in our heads at the same time. If if we are talking about the West and we're talking about principles, if we're talking about principles, it's supply principles. We can't just say like, well, those people good, right? So whatever they do, mm. that doesn't. That's not how it works. I guess that's that's how I would I would approach it. It's like if you want to make a principled argument, let's make a principled argument. Let's talk about what the principles are, and let's go and check, right? Because mm. nobody's a hundred percent anything, right? The, America is not a hundred percent the West. Greece is not a hundred percent the West. Israel is not a hundred percent the West, uh, and nobody gets right. a blank check. I think at the very least, if you're not talking about some interplay between these ideas or the fact that everything that the West is built on, you know, I mean, geometry and all these sorts of complicated forms of of math and um, all these technologies were transported from the East over to the West, right? I mean, during the Crusades, that was kind of the start of it. And then Italy was a big port between trades. So I just think that it's... um, It really is reductive to say that everything good in our world is because of the West and our our liberal ideas, especially when I mean, look around like have the how have these liberal ideas been holding up? Right. Um, We're but but at the same time, it's it's like if you're if if there, you know, I hear this argument, right, that, oh, you know, the, the, the Arabs are using our Western values against us or by like immigration, whatever, right, open borders. And it's like, okay, so what, are, so are you arguing that we should revoke those values? And if so, then what's the difference? But, you know, you, you, these ideas just, these the arguments just work all the way around and then come back to like argue against themselves, really. So mm-hmm. are you standing for liberal values or against them? Like you, you just, you have to pick a lane. Like <laughs> Right. And then also or, there's other factors too, like our intensely aggressive interventionist foreign policy, which is causing a lot of destabilization, which then turns into right. the, like, why are so many people leaving Yemen and Syria? Why are we getting so many immigrants from these areas? Right. Well, could it have anything to do with our regime change war that we started over there against, um, you know, Syria and and all these other countries? So I think that we have to be a little bit self-reflective um, about that. And I I mean, we can't we can't really figure out who the bad guy is right if we're just out here creating bad guys there's so much blowback that it's like how can you know what's good and bad right how can you actually put your resources to rooting out evil if you're you're funding the evil and creating it the great example is you know this this um, meme that's going around you know israel is the only democracy uh in the middle east and you know like we that by itself you know people are questioning but let's just accept it as a premise it's like okay it is the only let's say it's, it's the only democracy in the, in the middle east um why right because well there there was a democratically elected government in iran that got subverted by you know some three letter agencies <laughs> um and you know they they tried to have elections in egypt and you know well you know there was, uh, something happened <laughs> And, you know, Syria had an elected, you know, democratically elected government. But, you know, oh, yeah, uh, again, the the CIA (laughs) was not happy with that. Um, And then a bunch of dictators, though, you know, that could have been subverted, right? No problem, you know, the Saudis or whatever. So, okay, well, yeah, it is. If it is the only democracy in in the Middle East, it is because we made sure it was. Like, so what are we, you know, what's the... Again, like you say, the blowback, right? Like, what is the country that Iran, uh, the, 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 sorry, that Israel is most sort of concerned about right now? It's Iran. It was like, how did Iran become Iran? Well, because, you know, the Shah and, you know, all of that stuff. But nobody wants to go that far back. It's like, okay, oh, you know, whatever. Right. Are you going to. And like, colonialism was a real thing, I think, too. Like, we can't just say, we can't just like be like, um, pretend that colonialism never happened we can't pretend that the way that the middle east and africa are cut up are like the way they are just because they evolved that way naturally 
right? We can't pretend that Israel wasn't born out of this, like the end of colonialism into decolonization and the West trying to figure out what their play is to keep influence in that region. Um, so there's, there's all these things that anytime you try to bring up in the conversation, all of a sudden people want to moralize right pull this like well you you lack moral clarity or you're sympathizing with uh this awful group hamas or terrorists or this or that um so it's certainly been refreshing to have this back and forth where we can kind of you know let some of those um what i would consider i don't know like I know Brett Weinstein would call it like a buzzsaw, right? Like a, a cudgel that just like uh, cuts the conversation off and um, sort of be able to, to go into that territory. Um, I was trying to get somebody who didn't exactly have such a similar perspective as me. Like I know you and I like see, see, see things very similarly. I think that we've been able to play off each other really well. I've been trying to get somebody who like is more on the pro Israel side to engage, but um it's either a little bit hard to get them or I've had a couple who just keep pushing it off or just like things came up and they couldn't do it. Actually, if I can ask you one question before we go, um, you said you're, you're Jewish. Do you see a change in attitudes in the Jewish community, I guess, in the U S uh, in terms of this whole question? I mean, I, I, it looks like that to me from the outside, but I'm, you know, I don't really know. So, um, I honestly, like around here, I live in a extremely Jewish part of the country in the Northeast. And it seems like, you know, people like are just like pretty firmly, like we have to stand with Israel, um, and don't really want to have real discussions about it. So, um, like, I don't, I think people who... I've seen the medical freedom crowd kind of split along pretty interesting lines. Um, yeah, so there's the people. <laughs> yeah. So so that's that's kind of what I'm seeing. But um, in terms of like the the Jewish community uh, around here, I'm seeing them pretty firmly just like lean into their to their bias and and um, not really want to engage in conversations and kind of like the older like liberty crowd i would say like the younger liberty crowd is is much more um like open to having a, a real conversation or questioning israel at the very least whereas like the older liberty crowd um i got told in a chat that my comments were vitriolic and i wanted to be like please screenshot and show me where i was being vitriolic if anything people were being like more vitriolic towards me but sure i'll shut up um got it Duly and, and really, you know what? Like, honestly, that's the thing, right? Like, whatever happens, don't shut up. Because, um, okay, maybe you're like, that's also fine. That's another form of expression, and we're never going to get anywhere. Like, you can't yeah. get, you can't get to a right position if you don't cross wrong positions, right? Let's just accept that whatever we're saying right now, whatever we said in the last hour, is like old garbage. Well, I mean, okay, but how do you, how do we get right? Let's say we're completely wrong. How do we get right? Well, we have to work through our thoughts, right? And if we can't express ourselves, then we're stuck. So. Uh, this this whole uh, you know of all the of all the parts of this conversation the part where they're just trying to shut conversation down is uh, the part i think which is easier to see that like there's something wrong you know and people are like oh you're you're making a moral equivalence i don't know what is that like that that word of uh, you know it's fascinating because like almost like an argument geography where i've never heard that argument before like when we're talking about like, vaccines or whatever nobody was talking about like moral equivalences like what does that word even mean it's like i think one people would say I, oh, you're on the right or the wrong side of history a lot like people would be like oh you're going to be on the right side of history that was sort of like the way that we moralized covid and i really always tried to stay away from that even though in my heart like i do feel that way i didn't feel like it was a fair tool to use in a conversation i didn't feel be like feel like it was fair it, it, it to go around you know how history is going to turn yeah. out it implies you know how history is going to turn right. out right and if you do i mean i sure hope you're making a ton of money in the stock market and if you're not, then maybe, you know, maybe save it. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, um, I definitely appreciate you having this conversation with me. Um, I highly encourage people to check you out. Um, why don't you shout out some places people can follow you? Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm mostly on I'm mostly on on uh, X, I guess Twitter. Um, the my this this is my uh, my username uh, uh, there, and uh, yeah, I I basically tweet out my thoughts and you know sometimes uh people like them and sometimes people don't <laughs> that's, yeah that's i mean you, the stuff you tweet out about ai it's like pretty well beyond my realm i'm interested I, and i and i'm trying to hear your takes and i slowly like pick up on little things here or there um but yeah thank you so much for joining I mean, me I, I gotta say i appreciate my followers for tolerating me talking about israel covid ai and um, I don't even know, Sam Harris or whatever. No, like, I just, love like, it. Like, I'm into who, it. Who in the world would like to hear? <laughs> I'm not into this like niche down printing. thing. That's Very that's a problem I have as well. I'm like, okay, well, I should just stick to this one topic. But I, I feel like I do pretty well. Like, you know, I'm a teacher. I can take frameworks and apply them to different situations. And I also happen to know a lot, a lot of history because I was a history teacher. So I feel like I can bring that to the conversation. And um, all right. Well, maybe until Adam next Richard time. And, uh, hope we stay in touch. Yeah, for sure. And everybody out there, thank you for joining us. Be sure to follow Alexandros. And if you're not following me, be sure to follow me. And uh, remember, when you think free, you live free. Come on.